Let's get to your wagers for this week. Again, these are wagers that Bear is making because, guys, uh, I don't know why anyone would fake wager on, on Indiana. We'll get to that one in a second here. Uh, let's start with your first bet for college football. Houston is getting nine points at Texas Tech. Houston is 2-2. Two and two. Uh, They beat Sam Houston State last weekend, 38-7. to seven. They're 2-2 two and two against the spread as well. They covered in both their wins. Texas Tech is 1-3. They lost to West Virginia last weekend, and they're without their starting quarterback. And Tyler Shuck, who's out for the season with a lower leg injury. Where are you going? Yeah, it, 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 it's, this is mostly 8.5 out there now. I did find a 9, so hopefully by the time uh, you're getting around to listening to this, it's still a 9 out there. But uh, even at 8.5, I would take Houston. You never ultimately know what you're going to get from a Dan or Holgerson coach team. Sometimes uh, the effort can be lacking and things can go south like it did against TCU earlier this year. Key thing though, Donovan Smith, the former Texas tech quarterback is now Houston's quarterback. And, and I just wonder without Shuck, if more, if, if Baron Morton or whomever is going to be under center for tech can kind of get that offense going because they, they, they've been very disjointed at times. I, I do feel good that you're going to get a good effort from, from Houston here yeah. just because the circumstances of the game and Dana's connection to that place and, and that league. So uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to take the points here because I, I don't feel great about the direction yeah. of Tech's offense with, with that, without Chuck at quarterback. So far, the best thing Tech has done on offense was run the ball against Oregon with, with their quarterback. And now yeah. he's obviously like not in the game. Their offenses look kind of disjointed. And then defensively, they're really bad on first down. They they have one of the worst kind of third down percentages. Like they, they, they let their opponent have kind of the shortest third downs in the country, which isn't great against a Houston no. offense that I think is going to get better as the season goes on. And they, and they don't create havoc with their defensive line. They're down a quarterback. I'm with you. It's a lot of points for a team who doesn't have a, a starting quarterback in the game. Let's get to your second bet. Right here, and this one, who, buddy? Uh, Indiana uh, is getting 14 and a half points at Maryland. Total is 50 and a half. Indiana is two and two. They just beat Akron. Who, what a game! I think it was 39, uh, excuse me, 31 29. They've covered in three of their four games, though. Maryland, four and oh, just beat Michigan State, who is uh, in some disarray right now. Maryland's covered half of their four games bare. Again, total is 50 and a half here. Where, where are you leaning? I hate myself for betting Indiana <laughs> in this game. Those, those of you who've been following me for a long time know that I had a running skit about losing the Indiana phone number and putting that, putting that number on, on, on block. However, we, we let one slip through a caller ID. Like, like they must've called me from a different number that, that I was able to take the call, answer it. And, and look, it's more of a play on the situation. I think than yeah. anything else with Maryland having the undefeated looming with the undefeated showdown in Columbus next week against Ohio state. And if you want to, if you want to nitpick a little bit, you look at the two wins Maryland just had. Virginia is the worst team in the ACC. Michigan State may wind up proving to be the worst team in the Big Ten. And they got nine turnovers in those, those two games. Yeah. So they were basically handed the game by just ineptness on the other side of the ball. And Indiana looked respectable against Ohio State. And, and they look respectable against Louisville. So if they can just play with that type of, if they can play the way they did against Louisville and Ohio State, 14 and a half here and a potential look ahead spot for Maryland. I'll take Tom Allen and, and IU. Go, Indiana, Indiana, <laughs> Indiana, we're all for you. Oh, Indiana, 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 we're all for you. Ah, you. How do you know their fight song? How do you know? Yeah. Indiana, Indiana, and I go back a long you way. Go back a long way. Yeah, I was. I did not expect to be serenaded today. But that's Thank one. That's that. one of my like m many useless talents. I used to just like one of my one of the fun things I would do with our our group chat at my former employer was if it would, there'd be a score. If I had a bet, if something was on the board, like and we were winning that bet, I would kind of like break out a couple of hymns of the fight song and like send a voice message. You didn't text me the Oregon fight song last weekend. No, I'm mad at that. Oregon. Oh, they didn't score enough points for you. Over, how do you lose a four over 45 and a half team total yeah. in a game that's 35 nothing at halftime? Yeah, I had a best bet earlier this week, this year where there, I had a total of over like 60 and a half or something that had 52 points at halftime and didn't get over. Like, I, I it's that's the worst part about, about uh, wagering here. The point you make, though, this is a good point about like the look ahead spot. This happens a lot in college football, man, where like you have Maryland, they're going to have Ohio State we, next we, weekend. We'll see last weekend yeah, like you, you're just going to have these moments when you just sort of have to fade the better team. And Maryland right now, and this is, I was shocked when I said, where they're 12th of points per drive on offense and 11th on defense. Like, they're playing good football. It's not the mm -hmm. best competition, but this is a 
spot where like, if you're a player, I've been in this situation before, you look at the schedule and you absolutely do this. In college football, you do. Not in the NFL. You look at the schedule and you're like, oh, okay, Indiana, that's a win. Oh, Michigan State, that's a win. And you circle these games and you like, oh, Ohio State's coming. You know, you put a star across that game. Like, this is a game where I think Maryland's going to overlook Indiana. I think you're on the track here. Let's get to your third game right now. Arkansas on the road against Texas A&M. Texas A&M is favored in by Arlington, six. In Arlington neutral site. Oh, Arlington neutral site. I'm sorry. Arlington neutral site. A&M is favored by six. Uh, total is 53 and a half. A&M is three and one. They just beat Auburn by 17 points. Outside of the Miami game, their defense has been really, really good. Reports are their starting quarterback, obviously, Connor Wegman, out for the season. Arkansas, two and two. They beat two group of five teams. They lost their last uh, two games against power five teams, including LSU and a close one last weekend. Where are you leaning? here i just even without wegman max johnson played well last week yeah. against auburn he should he's shown flashes at times that, that he can make plays and the combination of of the a m defense and, and their ability to run like for the first time in a long time a m is actually underrated like they, they've been Ooh. like they've been viewed as okay. this team and moving in the last couple of years and like to be better than they actually were for the first time, they got a, a team that, because of all those disappointments or failures, however you want to phrase it, like they're kind of going unnoticed. And now I think people are just going to assume that they're going to take a step back without Wegman. I, I'd be careful here. I know this series has been close and you've had wild, ridiculous plays uh, to swing games. But I worry about Arkansas in this situation because. A couple of weeks ago, twice you blew a double-digit lead at home yep. in a loss to BYU. Last week, you had a, a physical game and a tight loss to, uh, to arguably your now your your biggest rival uh, in, in LSU. And now you got to take on A and M and that defense and and that running. Like, I just don't like the situation, and and I worry that I worry that Arkansas might not. They might yeah. need another week to kind of fill up the tank again and, and get ready to play a, a game against the quality of the opposition that, 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 that A&M is. So I'm going to, I'm going to lay the six. I, I realize I could be walking into a 31, yeah. 27 A&M win, but, but I like, I like the Aggies and I like the deal because remember too, A&M has Alabama next week. Yeah. So, but so I'm, I'm, I'm going to lay it and, and hope for the best. Arkansas has trouble generating explosive plays on offense, which is amazing with KJ Jefferson right. and Rocket Sanders. You would, you would think that they wouldn't, and the important part about explosive plays is when you play a team like AM and their defense, you can't go 10, 11, 12 play drives. Like you're just not going to do that in a college offense. There's so many ways to make mistakes against a good defense in a 10 or 12 play drive. So you have to be able to score on these good defenses very quickly and kind of catch them by surprise. Because again, you're not going to pickleball them down the field. And when you're a team like Arkansas that can't do that, you're not going to score. <laughs> Like, like that's the thing. You're just not going to score in this game unless AM maybe looks ahead or for some reason isn't playing this hard. But again, a neutral site game will have a different feel to this game as well. So I think AM will be ready for this one. Let's get to the last one here. Um, Michigan at Nebraska. Nebraska is a 17 and a half point underdog at home. The total 39 and a half. Very low here. Michigan's 4 0. They've covered zero of their four games. They did push last weekend with a closing line against Rutgers. Nebraska's 2 and 2. They won their last two games against Northern Illinois and Louisiana Tech. And they have made a quarterback change, getting rid of, of Sims there and putting in, uh, I think it's Hageman. Is yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah, but, <clears throat> yeah Sims has uh, been hurt and Henrik. Her Henrik Harburg is, is Harburg. The, that's what yeah, it is. Okay, I'm sorry. Is the uh, is, is the Nebraska quarterback? But I just look Michigan. Obviously, in Georgia, have not covered this year, but people have. We, we've mentioned that. We'll discuss that uh, later as well. But this defense is still really good. Yeah, and it's a situation where the, the number of possessions in this game is not going to be very high. <laughs> Like Michigan is one of the slowest paced teams. Yep. I think there's on average they have like ten possessions a game. For, 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 they average like ten possessions a game. So your your margin for error when you get when you get the ball, you need to do something with it. And I just don't think Nebraska is going to have a very high success rate against this Michigan defense. And say you're going to get nine drives maybe in the game, how many are they going to score? Like we, we look, we know we know Michigan's offense has not been great so far, but they've allowed what. 30 points, I think, this year, 23 total points this year in four games. Yeah. 
And I know it hasn't been necessarily great competition, but Nebraska, the best thing you can say about Nebraska is that with Harburg in the lineup now, the last couple of weeks with Sims being out with the injury, is they have not turned the ball over as much. I think turned over once yeah. the last two weeks. However, they played nobody. I, they played nobody, and they still only scored what twenty eight. I think twenty last weekend. Yeah, yeah. so it's not, it's not like their offense is really humming. And to under ten and a half team totals, where I landed here with the Huskers, if they get two touchdowns, so be it. But a touchdown field goal yeah. seems about the ceiling for Nebraska here. I think sometimes in these low totals, I think I worry about a defensive score, but Michigan doesn't turn the ball over. Right. Like they're not going to score. They're not going to score Nebraska. They're not going to score special teams. Like efficient, yeah. safe passing game. So you're asking for Nebraska to basically drive the field twice in one of those drives to score a touchdown. And then when obviously they get a field goal and you still cover that, like you need basically two touchdowns here, two or two or two point conversion. Yeah. But I mean, the game could be in a point where they don't even need that, which I guess is always, a, but like you have, that's a lot. I think to ask this offense. Bear Bets full episodes drop twice a week right here on the Bear Bets YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to stay ahead of the odds and let's celebrate all of our wins together.